the mayor's budget address, the county attorney's driver's education program reaches a milestone and litter abatement. All this and more on this week's edition of Lexington Now. I'm Neil Noah and this is Lexington Now for the week of April 15th, 2019. This past week, Mayor Linda Gorton presented her first budget address to the council and citizens. The budget I'm proposing today is the result of extreme diligence to preserve what makes us great as we begin to face new challenges. It maintains and protects the programs our citizens value. The vital roles government plays in maintaining a strong city are in place, and as strong as ever in this budget. Police and fire protection, E911 service, popular parks programs, waste collection service, road improvements and maintenance, support for neighborhoods, funds to help those who are most in need of our help, and more. This budget is balanced and fiscally responsible. It keeps our financial house in order, and it establishes the resiliency needed in the challenging years ahead. Put simply, it resets our spending. Why do we need to reset our spending? Well, let's take a few minutes and talk about that. And first, take a look at this chart. The red line at the top represents our projected fixed expenditures, like pension, salaries, and debt service through fiscal year 23. The blue line shows you our projected revenue through fiscal year 23. I want you to soak that in. The gap in the middle, well, that's our problem. Our expenses are rising faster than our revenue. That's why we must reset spending with this budget. Through no fault of our own, we are likely to face years of continuing increases in pension costs and slow revenue growth. It also means that cuts are part of every division budget, government-wide, as well as most of the budgets of outside agencies and partner agencies that receive government money. And it means that we had to say no to a lot of worthy requests for funding. I have built this budget on a projected growth rate that is the lowest in several years. As we started to put this budget together, we asked each city division, including the mayor's office, the council office, and public safety, to cut 15% in their unrestricted accounts. Partner agencies and our constitutional offices were asked to do the same. Even after that 15% cut, we still had over $11 million more in continuation funding requests than our budgeting team forecast in revenue. We built this budget with the following common sense guidelines in mind. No tax increases in this budget. Our citizens expect us to do everything we can to tighten our own belts first before we ask them to pay more. And raising taxes alone will not be the solution to our problems. No layoffs. We need our highly professional staff to ensure that excellent service to our citizens continues. But to protect everyone's job, 
tough choices were required. There are no salary increases built into this budget for non-sworn personnel. This is one of the decisions we've made in the budget that I'm most concerned about. Our employees are excellent and they deserve a raise. No new positions. A major component in finding savings is to have each office look at where they can become more efficient and prioritize the work they do. This is the time to modernize many of our functions. Continued slowdown in hiring for the next 15 months. The bond package I put together will not have a meaningful debt increase. We will continue to fill vacancies in sworn personnel. Police officers, firefighters, and corrections officers. In social services, we have kept funding in place that helps those in our city who need it most. Our extended social resource grants, known as ESR, the funds we use to assist social service agencies throughout the community will remain at the same level as this current year. I believe that tight budgets offer opportunities for every one of us. Government divisions, partner agencies, business and community groups. These are opportunities to find new sources of funding, both private and public to uncover new efficiencies, engage the public, and encourage everyone to give back to our community. Increase transparency and accountability. Be more results oriented and more. We will remain in a strong position to face the coming challenges ahead by continuing to do the hard work needed now. Many opportunities are missed because they come dressed in overalls and look like work. This budget is a message to all of us. It is time to do that work. Thank you very much for being here. For the full address, visit our Lex TV YouTube page. The Fayette County Attorney Driver's Education Program reached a milestone recently with the graduation of its 1500th student. Hi, I'm Larry Roberts, County Attorney here in Lexington, and we're here to recognize a young man who is the 1500th student in our class. We started back in 2011 uh, teaching this defensive driving school, and we have nine kids in a class. Uh, there are basically two classes a day all the way through the summer. One starts at 8 and goes to 12. We're in the middle of one right now. And then the next class starts at 1 and goes till 5. So Henry Box is the 15th hundred student who's going to graduate from this thing. It'll be tomorrow. Uh, he's actually, he's got two more days of doing it. So he, if he wrecks the car, he won't get it. But I don't think he will. We, we basically teach a child how to anticipate an accident that has never occurred yet. And that means you got to think about other people's driving habits because most kids think if you drive safe, then everything's fine. Well, that's not true. Then we teach them how do you get out of an accident if it's about to happen. It could be a car stopping right in front of you and you hit it because you hit your brakes and slide into it or an icy road or a wet road or an edge of a highway that doesn't have any drop off or no, no, uh, no gliding area to pack, go and so you jerk your car back and lose control. We teach all of that here in a 20 hour school that lasts five days in a row and goes four hours a day. This started back in 2010 with an idea of, by a fellow in my office named Greg Howard, who was a captain on our police force. And he said, why don't we start doing something about kids driving and having accidents? Because we were having 1,900 accidents a year caused by teenagers, 16 to, eight, 16 to 19. So his brainchild was that, they standing right there. And he told me about it. I didn't have any money. I, I didn't have a place to do it. But he kept at me and we went with Mark Barnard, who later became the police chief, to Richmond, Virginia to study this. And we came back with the idea we can use the driving pad, which is five acres right over here. We started doing it. Uh, Mayor, Mayor uh, Gray gave me permission to use the driving pad. Ms. Gordon was a commissioner at that time, a city councilman, and she was on board with the council and helping let us do that. 
and I guaranteed Mayor Gray, and I we have never done it since. I uh, haven't uh, haven't changed that we would never accept any money from the city or any money from the state or the federal government to run this program. We do it by, do by donations, uh, great donations from people who have their kid in it or their uh, a, a company that thinks that we're doing fine. So we float the boat that way. Uh, just a few comments. I'm really happy to be here with you today, our county attorney Larry Roberts, to celebrate the Fayette County Attorney Driver Education Program's 1500th graduate. <laughs> that student, Henry Box, and his family are here with us today. Henry attends Lexington Catholic High School. And if I understand correctly, your other two siblings have graduated from the program. So you got the, all the teenagers trained. I also want to recognize Second District Council Member Josh McKern, who's with us today. Thank you. There is a clear need for this program in our community, and I'm really happy that students like Henry are taking advantage of it. Schools no longer provide this type of instruction. When I was growing up, I took it through school. Teenagers are 400 times more likely to be involved in a traffic accident than adults. Distracted driving, such as texting, has led to an increase in accidents. This program is a positive training course that makes a huge difference. Thank you very much, County Attorney Roberts, for continuing this initiative, and to Barney Kimman, the Director of Instruction. Barney's, Barney's right up here. here with us, too. There are no tax dollars used to cover the cost of the program. Attorney Roberts has found funding through grants and private sponsors, and I issue a great thanks to those sponsors for this program. The city allows the use of our blacktop pad on top of what used to be the old city landfill, which is now closed and sealed. It's a perfect use of this space. And we also allow us a small amount of office space in our police roll call center for the administrative part. Uh, it's very special that the city has taught uh, 1,500 students. Um, it means a lot for the city to have safe drivers. Oh, I learned a couple things. I learned how to pre prevent a skid, uh, learned parallel parking, uh, learned how to Walmart parking, the side parking. Oh, Walmart yeah. parking. <laughs> uh, and then also, uh, just whenever a tree come in front of a tree, you have to try to prevent running into it and getting back on the road. You drive, I mean, every day, and so it's important to know how to drive. And it, like the stats say, I mean, it, it's very dangerous, but you just got to learn how to do it. When we come back, stopping litter. The Senior Services Commission will be hosting a series of public education and input meetings about home expansion units. If you'd like to learn more, join us at the Lexington Senior Center. Welcome back to Lexington Now. As with any urban area, litter has become a significant issue in Lexington. But there are steps you can take to help reduce the problem. Litter happens in every city, everywhere. And the most common form of litter, cigarette butts. The city of Lexington works to educate people and decrease the amount of litter. Keep Lexington Beautiful helps groups coordinate and host their own litter cleanups. And every summer, we hop in a canoe and clean up the Kentucky River. 
cleaning up and preventing litter takes direct action. Dispose of your trash in the right way. Keep your cigarette ash in a closable container. And don't put trash in a cart or dumpster labeled for recycling. Spring is here and the sound of humming lawnmowers fills the air. We've got some tips for you to get the best results from your lawn. Living in the bluegrass means we're lucky to have the softest and greenest grass around. But sometimes, when people take pride in their lawn, they overdo it, using pesticides and herbicides to make their lawn look perfect. These chemicals are not only harmful to wildlife and the environment, but humans and pets as well. So let's use something more natural. Chemical products like this do more damage than meets the eye. First, they harm wildlife, including beneficial insects like bees and butterflies. Second, chemicals from these products wash away when it rains. This chemical runoff pollutes our watersheds, flowing into creeks and harming the ecosystem. Here are a few tips when it comes to mowing. Don't mow shorter than three inches. Mow more often and avoid cutting more than a third of the leaf when you mow. Don't mow when it's too hot or too dry. Keep the mower blade sharp and set at the highest setting. Kentucky gets a lot of rain, but during dry spells in the summer, it's better to water deeply and less often. For better soil, spread a half inch of compost or natural fertilizer over the grass and rake it in, or spray a natural fertilizer before watering. Don't throw yard waste in the streets, and be sure to put any lawn clippings in the gray yard waste cart. Everything that goes in the gray yard waste cart will be ground into mulch. Lawn care is sometimes more of an art than a science. It's okay to treat your lawn well, but avoid using chemicals. The bees will thank you for it. Chris Edwards is here with our live meeting coverage for this week. Chris, what do we have? It's week of April 15th, and we have just a couple of meetings to tell you about which you can see live here on Lex TV. First, on Tuesday, April 16th at 1 p.m. will be the General Government and Social Services Committee. This week, we'll see presentations from the Bluegrass Area Development District, the COACH Fellowship Program. Now, COACH is an acronym for Civic Outreach Advocacy and Cooperative Hiring. This is a program to get young African-American men more civically engaged. Then we'll get an update on the community corrections, and finally, a presentation on the housing crisis encampments. Then at 3 p.m. on Tuesday will be the Council Work Session. So that's all the meetings we have for you this week on Lex TV. As always, you can see these meetings live here on Lex TV and WebStream at the city's website at lexingtonky.gov forward slash Lex TV. Well, that's all for this week. You can keep up with us on social media and check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex or catch our live traffic cams on lexingtonky.gov. For the staff and producers at Lex TV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now.